past rule could be understood as discriminatory against these um, Muslim women, especially at a sporting event that is held under the theme, Diversity Shines Here. That conversation is coming up in just a moment. From Asia News Weekly, you're listening to Asia Now, a collection of stories and interviews from the Asia-Pacific region. For the past two weeks, the 2014 Asian Games have fueled sports discussion in the region. As they come to a close, one question comes to mind. Were they worth it? It's just one conversation taking place in Asia now. Welcome to the podcast, everyone. I'm your host, Steve Miller, and I want to thank you for downloading and listening to this week's podcast. The Asian Games officially kicked off their 17th incarnation on September 19th. Some 15,000 athletes from 45 different nations have participated in the Games, including members from North Korea. The Games are set to come to a close Saturday, October 4th. And today on the podcast, I'm joined by Kim Tae Jung from the Korea Times and Kwon Ji Young from W Magazine to take a closer look at the games during an informal roundtable discussion. Tae Jung and Ji Young, welcome to the program. Hi. Well, we're coming up on the end of the Asian Games, Tae Jung, and I was wondering before we get too deep into our discussion today, if you could spend a little time and give us some of the highlights. Sure. Actually, it has been quite interesting, you know, event in terms of especially various records. At least 16 world records have been set in archery, shooting, and weightlifting, along with 28 Asian records in archery, shooting, swimming, and weightlifting. South Korea shooter uh, Kim Mi Jin set a world record in women's double trap event with 110 points and Weightlifter Chin Salo Jupia of Kazakhstan also set a record when she lifted 132 kilograms in the women's clean and jerk. And North Korea has set five world records in weightlifting. What about any upset matches or things that were surprising? One of the biggest upsets at, at the Indonesian Games so far was by Japanese swimmer Kuzuke Hegino who outswam South Korea's Park Taewon and China's Sunyang in the men's 200-meter freestyle. Hong Kong's Shrek Wai Hong beat South Korea's Yang Hak Sun in the vault, in which many have expected a showdown between Yang and North Korea's Ri Se Kwang. South Korean 17-year-old shooter beat Jin Jong Ho, so two clinch top honors in the 10-meter air pistol, becoming the youngest shooter to win an Asian Games gold medal. That was really amazing. I was able to watch that on television. Just incredible marksmanship. Gian, what can you tell us about crowd reactions in terms of, well, let's just go all the way back to the opening ceremony. What did people think about the opening ceremony? Um, well, actually, the responses to the opening ceremony were mostly negative. Uh, mostly, many people likened the event to a local concert because more Hallyu or Korean wave stars appeared in the opening than sports stars. So many found it strange that actress Young Hae, who had little to do with the sport, was the final torchbearer. So some said it was the worst ceremony as of yet. And the public was also not pleased with the opening ceremony that featured more Harvey stars than athletes. And many complained that the sound systems weren't on par with expectations, despite the fact that South Korea is a, is a technology powerhouse. Ouch! Oh, that stings! Well, what have people been saying about the venues themselves? Um, so the crowd seemed to think the venues um, themselves were actually fine, but the transportation among venues has also become a problem because some stations don't have access to buses or subways. So many venues, people are finding it difficult to find their way from one venue to another. And a lot of these venues were located quite a distance away from restaurants and coffee shops, which made it difficult for them to find food or coffee during breaks. Oh, that's never a good sign. What about yeah. larger problems, say, like with the games themselves? Any major controversies or complaints? Yeah, um, most recently, the Qatar um, women's best basketball team um, forfeited the match because the fact that they were asked to remove their hijab during um, their match in accordance with Article 4.2.2 of the International Basketball Federation rules. Um, these rules state that players cannot wear headgear, hair accessories, or jewelry. 
So um, criticism mounted over the fact that this rule could be understood as discriminatory against these um, Muslim women, especially at a sporting event that is held under the theme, Diversity Shines Here. The fact that the Qatar um, delegation had not been informed of this regulation ahead of the Asian Games has added fuel to fire. Um, one media outlet reported that the IAGOC, or the Organizing Committee for the Incheon Asian Games, had, had told them that these hijabs would be allowed, but on scene, actually at the arena, they were asked to remove them. They said that the decision to disallow headgear was made by a technical director of FIBA, or the governing body for basketball in Asia, and they said that the rules at the Asian Games have always been governed by these respective federations. So they, they assumed that they had no. Right. But that was one of the things that was really evident during this whole process is that there was a clear lack of communication between the Qatar right. team and, and FIBA. What about some of the other controversies that have taken place? Yeah, um, so Bahrain's Ruth Jebet um, crossed the finish line first in the steeplechase event at the main stadium in 9 minutes, 31.36 seconds. This was more than 24 seconds inside the game's record. But she entered the home straight, straight on her final lap and stumbled slightly and put in, a foot in the infield and was disqualified. Um, she was led away during the ceremony, which had never actually happened before. But after a meeting between the Asian Athletic Association officials and delegates from Bahrain, China, and India, Jebet regained her gold. The jury confirmed that there had been no violation of rules and that she hadn't hindered any other runner. So later, Bahrain um, expressed fury over the way the situation was handled, and the OCA, the OCA apologized and said it was a procedure problem. Gian, what about the overall event? Nothing this big can go off without a hitch. Yeah. Have there been any other big issues? Yeah, just to name a few examples, the shooting range disallowed vehicles other than VIP transportation during events, so visitors were required to park their vehicles at a nearby high school and advice to use shuttle buses. Some volunteers were too busy getting autographs to help and inform visitors, and the Asian Games flame went out on September 20th, just a day after it was lit. Oh, my um, gosh. Media, yeah. Media and reporters were inconvenienced because some stadiums did not provide Wi-Fi, and the official newspaper, the, da the Asia Daily, was too much oriented towards Korean news. So foreign media found that uncomfortable. The public was not pleased with the fact that relatively unknown or unpopular sports went untelevised. And others found it strange that signs in front of ticket booths read sold out, but the stadiums were nearly half empty. Well, yeah, that was one of the things that was really interesting leading up to mm -hmm. the start of the games is that a week before we saw reports that ticket sales were hovering around 10%. We've seen some reports that at maximum 30% for some of the lesser known sporting events. What mm -hmm. were the ticket sales? All the ticket sales uh, remained so about 30,000 of the 60,000 seats for the opening ceremony were sold but there was criticism about how the organizing committee gave out 10,000 or so tickets for free. Wow. Now, in terms of specific events, which events were well attended? So sports stars, like celebrity status sports stars, drew crowds like Moss to a Flame, but stadiums featured unpopular or relatively unknown sports went nearly half empty at best. Um, thousands went to watch swimmer Pak Taewon and gymnast Yang ak -sun. Um, perform, but other events had um, little public attention. So there were like fewer than 100 people in the 41,000 seat Poyang Stadium when Jordan's football team beat the UAE team. And spectators who visited the Tonak Tunisian for a basketball game, a uh, handball game, were forced to return home as there were no tickets available, but the arena was virtually empty. That's amazing. I had the opportunity to watch the South Korean and Japan quarterfinal football match. And mm -hmm. I was suspecting that was going to be a hugely contested fight for getting tickets. And I was amazed to see how empty it still was. Mm -hmm. uh, there were rumors this past week that some employees in Korea were getting pressured to buy tickets. Is, is that true? Um, there were news reports regarding civil servants at municipalities across the country who were asked to buy tickets for events at the ongoing games, as only 30% of the tickets had been reserved. Um, but the documents were careful with their wording, so the organizing committee merely asked cooperation from the civil servants or recommended that they buy tickets. But these employees considered it an obligation. Uh, let's talk money. Let's talk about the economics. Taejong, what 
is the situation with the bottom line? How much money did Incheon put into these games, and are they really breaking even? The organizing committee has spent about 2.5 trillion won for the event. And it's one tenth of the budget spent at the 2010 Guangzhou Asian Games, but it's still a huge amount of money for a municipal government to raise. And given the low ticket sales so far, I don't think the event has yet reached the break-even point and will do so ever. So I think they have already knew that actually it would not be an immediate success, as politicians, including you know. Incheon Mayor Yu Jongbo stressed the long-term gains in tourism will help offset the costs when he first prepared for the event. It seems obvious that the city debt burden grows after the games, and the, and many of the new sports facilities are no longer of use. And this will definitely a huge burden for the Incheon city. Okay, well, let's turn our gaze towards the future. 2018, we have the next Asian Games in Jakarta, and they were pretty much awarded the Games because no one else was in the running. No one else was willing to host it. Is this a sign that few countries are really interested in hosting these Games because of this economic burden? And what does the future hold for the Asian Games? Actually, as you have seen in Incheon, overall, you know, I think the Asian Games are interesting event for Asians as a regional festival. But as there have been interesting sports competitions and new stars shining with new records set up, but in general, in terms of financial gains, hosting the Asian Game and making it successful would be very challenging. And that's why not many Asian countries, ex- except for rich ones, would want to host it. Also, in my opinion, uh, I think the Asian Games need some improvement to attract more spectators for financial success. The Asian Games are relatively less attractive as people here have already enjoyed high-profile events such as the World Cup or Major League Baseball or English Premier League and so on. So if they want to be successful, they need to add more element of entertainment for the event. Okay, Jian, we'll come back to you for this last question. The games close on the 4th. What can we look forward to with the closing ceremony? So according to a press conference, uh, the closing ceremony will feature mostly um, the highlights of the Incheon Asian Games. And most importantly, um, the closing ceremony will be focusing on coaches and those who are close to the athletes but were behind and not in the spotlight. Wow. So still, still not what people really want to see in terms of actually seeing athletes front and center. Exactly. All right. Well, Taejon and Jian, thank you very much for joining me today. Thank you for having us on the show. Kim Tae-jong is the assistant sports editor with the Korea Times, and Kwon Ji-yeon is with W Magazine, and I'd like to thank both of them for joining me this week. Now, before I go, I would like to hear from you. How do you feel about the Asian Games? Are they a worthwhile endeavor and add value to the region? Do the Games do nothing more than boast the egos of the countries that are rich enough and able to host them? Are they necessary for regional teams to prepare for larger contests, say, like the Olympics? And what are your predictions for the 18th Asian Games in Jakarta 2018? I hope you'll leave your comments on our webpage or on Facebook or reply via Twitter. Now, if you haven't found us on social media, our address on Facebook, of course, is facebook.com slash Asian News Weekly, and you can tweet your responses to at Asian News Weekly. If you'd like to send us a voice comment, you can do that as well. Just fire up your Skype and dial Asian News Weekly. And if you leave a voicemail message, please include your name and where you're calling from. You can also send an email to the show with your questions or feedback, and even a voice message if you'd like. Just drop a line to asiannewsweekly at gmail.com. You'll find this and all of our episodes on our website, But if you'd prefer to get the show in podcast form, you can look for us on iTunes, Stitcher, and TuneIn Radio. And if you enjoyed this episode, please share it with your friends and subscribe to the podcast so you won't miss the next one. Again, thank you so much for listening today. For Asia Now, I'm Steve Miller. Asia Now is licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives 4.0 International License.